I want you to imagine being a priest in the satanic church and in the middle of doing a ritual, you encounter the love of God and the power of Jesus. This is exactly what happened to Rion, who is the co-founder of the South African satanic church, satanic temple. And in May, he had an encounter with God that he's gonna share in this video. Guys, this is an amazing testimony. If you've been online for the last few days, you've probably seen this floating around. I want to show you a bunch of the of the testimony and then I'll as well link the full video down below. And we're gonna look at some powerful points that he makes and listen to his encounter with Jesus. So I'm telling you guys, this is gonna be a good one. Co-founder of the Satanic Church in South Africa, Rion, is gonna be sharing his testimony here. Let's react and watch this super, super powerful stuff. We're gonna check this out together. I'm gonna to give you some of my thoughts on it and then we're gonna watch some parts here at the end where he says something pretty interesting here. So let's take a look at this. So the important part of, of my experience is that in the middle of May last, it's about yeah, two months ago, I did my last interview for the South African Satanic Church, not knowing that that would be my last radio interview that I'm doing. Um, and I, and I, most people know about the interview, it was, it was a Cape Talk. And there's a woman who works there. Um, it doesn't matter. Um, I didn't speak to her before this video, so I'm not sure if I can mention her name. I'm just going to call her Amy. So Amy has been communicating with me about media stuff, about the South African Satanic Church over such a long period of time. And we never met in person because of COVID and all the interviews was online, etc. So I did this interview and after the interview, this lady came to me. And in this interview, I said, I don't believe in Jesus. And I don't believe that Jesus Christ exists because I didn't. And she came to me after the interview, after I said that. And she hugged me and she held me in a way that I've never so powerful been loved. That's all she did. She didn't say anything. She just said, it's nice to finally meet you in person. And she just hugged me and she held me. And a week later, uh, through WhatsApp, through a status, I saw this woman is a Christian. I couldn't believe it because I've never. Literally her hugging him. Had a Christian this. do that. I've never had, I've never experienced A Christian showing that much love and acceptance unconditionally. After I've said the things I've said, she did that. And it stayed with me. I, I just like, I said, oh, okay, cool. She's a Christian, whatever. And then a week later, and I don't want to, I don't want to talk about Satanism. I don't want to listen to what he's about to say here, guys. About the details of it, but in the occult, there is certain rituals that you do. So he's talking about rituals to ascend now. to the top of a pyramid, and you can only do a certain amount at a time. And after that interview, after that interview, I had a meeting with council members at the at the church, and they said, "Okay, great. Now we've done." all these interviews and people know and it's growing, Satanism is growing and believe me people it is, it's growing. And I had to do a ritual by myself to see what is the next step? What is the next thing? How do I get more, more power, more influence? And I did this ritual and I opened myself up and Jesus. Wow, in the middle of a ritual. Appeared. And I was extremely cocky and I said, whatever. 
if you are Jesus, you need to prove it. And he flooded me with the most beautiful love and energy. And I recognized it immediately because that word at the radio station showed it to me. That's how I recognized the love of Christ. Because four people, four Christians showed it, not the others. He says in the beginning of this interview that he's only met four Christians in his entire life that showed him the love of Jesus, the love of God. So what a message to the church, what a message to us that we need to show unconditional love to people. Paul says, associate with the lowly in the world, associate with the humble and show them unconditional love and repay evil with love and evil for good. And this is literally what led him to So I recognized it. I'm gonna change specs, sorry because transition is not transition apparently anymore excuse me oh, there we go I, I love this recognized it immediately because four people showed it to me and i didn't understand it at the time i couldn't understand it because like i said i didn't believe even when i was in Christian ministry almost two years ago, 20 years ago. So 20 years ago, he was in Christian ministry. You you think you believe things and you're, okay, so there's a book that tells you certain things and therefore it's that. I never knew it until a month or two ago. And I could recognize it because there's people, there's four people who showed it to me. And it's not the people who fight you and they declare spiritual warfare and they do things and it's not, that's not the love of Christ. The love of Christ is unconditional. We literally just taught in Romans last night that says we bless those, we don't curse them. So guys, our job as Christians is not to be sending curses to these people, not to be trying to attack these people with, you know, curses and send spells at them, back at them and return to sender. Paul says we bless them, we love them. Those that persecute us, Jesus said you turn the other cheek when they slap one cheek. When they take something from you, you give them something else. So is there an element of spiritual warfare? Of course there is. But we're not warring against these people. We're warring against spiritual powers. Very and important note. For the last month, I've been having conversations, real conversations with God. And these things that we will never, never understand with our cognitive minds. We will never understand it. And I've had people obviously in the last few weeks say, you know what, it's cognitive dissonance and whatever, like intellectual things. And I've studied this and that. so have I. I, I. I've been an atheist for most of my life. I've been a Satanist for four, five years. So I understand where a lot of those people come from. But when you experience it, it is something different. And again, I'm not here to attack people, but I want to get a few things off my chest. I I have for a long time believed that I am not worthy wow. of God's grace because I'm gay and because I have certain abilities. So people made me believe for a very long time I'm not worthy of that. Let me tell you something today. Well, the kingdom of God is not a gated community. The kingdom of God is open Come to on. everybody. It's called grace. It's called grace, people. 
and somebody forwarded me I want to talk about this stuff somebody forwarded me a video over the weekend so guys, I want to stop it there because the full video is like 50 something minutes and I'll link it down below. We need to be praying for him. We need to pr be praying that God continues to reach him, that God continues to convict him, that God would continue to use him. A lot of Christians are saying, oh, what about this or what about that or pointing this out? This is what we're praying for, guys, for these people to get saved, for people in this level to get saved. So I'm praying for him. I'm rooting for him. I'm going to reach out to him, say, hey, if there's anything you need, let me know. I'm here to support. I'm here to help because this is what we're praying for. This is not the time to be a Pharisee, to be a Sadducee to point this out or this out or this is wrong in theology that's wrong in theology hey when you got saved there was a bunch of stuff wrong in your theology our job as believers is to pray is to pray that god would use and god would reach and that god would continue to convict and god would continue to change and so man i'm excited about this news i wanted to bring you guys this video and show you this because we celebrate this is what we pray for. This is what we're believing God for to save those in high levels of the satanic church and Hollywood and cele celebrity world. Religious people doesn't matter. This is our job is to pray for these people is to be in their corner. So I want you to pray for Rian. I want you to continue to lift him up in prayer and believe that God's going to establish his will in his life. Let me know what you thought about this video. Super powerful. The kingdom of God is not a gated community. It's open to everybody. And when we come into that kingdom, God changes us. And I'm praying that over him. I'm praying that over you. Let me know what you think down below.